an IQ score, which is short for intelligence quotient, is used as a worldwide teller for the scale of an individual's intelligence. The notion of IQ was developed in 1916 by a man called Lewis Terman, who was an American psychologist and author who was noted as a pioneer in educational psychology. This meaning, he was one of the first to teach, theorize, and study it. IQ has several definitions, but the most accepted one is the capacity for knowledge, learning, and knowledge possessed. This means that your IQ is measured and whatever score you achieve is used to measure your capacity for learning and knowledge. Now you may be thinking, what is my IQ and how do I measure it? I will link a few IQ tests down below in the description for you to try out, but while taking a single test will most likely not be accurate as to one's intelligence, there are several different IQ tests a person can take to find their average score. These tests are usually language or pattern based, and taking multiple of them will allow you to come up with an average score, which you can call your IQ. Now, different IQ scores will place you into in different brackets of intelligence. Starting at zero, although it is not possible to score zero, and being potentially unlimited. The highest IQ ever estimated was 300, but we will discuss that later on. The first bracket, which is an IQ score of 20 or below, will signal profound mental retardation which is a disability affecting the brain's capacity for learning. Now, any IQ score below 70 can be a sign of mental retardation, with the lower the score, the more severe the disability. Now, only 5% of people have an IQ under 70. Having a 70 to 79 IQ is in the category borderline deficiency, which is effectively borderline retardation. Now remember that retardation is a disability. Having an 80 to 89 IQ score is classed as dull, meaning a little bit below average, but not quite borderline retardation. The average IQ, 90 to 110, is the most common score. 50% of all IQ scores fall between 90 and 110. I guess you could call this your average person, even though the term average is extremely accurate, it is the average for the IQ test. Having a 110 to 119 IQ will place you in the superior intelligence bracket, meaning you are above average, so if you score this, good on you. Now we get into the big boy scores. An IQ of 115 to 124 is the average IQ of a person attending university and doing reasonably well. Postgraduate students, which are students who have finished a first or bachelor's degree and are now doing higher education, range between an IQ of 125 to 134 and are noted as gifted. 135 to 144 is noted as highly gifted. This category of people are named intellectuals. Now, anything above 140 is listed as genius, so these next IQ scores are far above average, and if you score one of these, you should be seriously impressed. Standing at 145 to 154 IQ, we have professors. No, not professors like Dumbledore from Harry Potter. I mean university professors who have attained masters in their field over many years of study and work. At 155 to 164 IQ, we have the range that includes Nobel Prize winners, such as 2017's winners in physics, Reiner Wies, Barry Barish, and Kip Thorne. These individuals won the Nobel Prize in Physics for their decisive contributions to the LIGO detector and the observation of gravitational waves. Einstein, arguably the most famous physicist ever, was considered to have an IQ ranging between 160 to 190. However, this is an estimate as he never actually took the test. An IQ of 165 to 179 is loosely labelled as high genius while an IQ of 180 to 200 is labelled highest genius. Now, after 200 IQ, things get crazy. These people are extraordinary and have insane learning abilities. For example, the highest IQ ever estimated, now estimated meaning he didn't actually take the test, but his IQ was assumed to be in this range, belonged to the brain of a man called William James Siddis. His IQ was estimated to be between 250 to 300, which is absolutely insane. He could do some seriously impressive things. 
By the time he was five years old, he could use a typewriter and had learned to speak Latin, Greek, Russian, French, German, and Hebrew. He was, however, denied admission to Harvard at the age of six due to emotional immaturity. I mean, obviously he's going to be immature, he's six. Later, though, at age 11, they were forced to admit him. He then gave a very well-received first lecture on four-dimensional physics at age 11. I mean, if you picture that, an 11-year-old teaching professors and students about four-dimensional physics, it's really insane, but it did happen. Now, if you've already taken the test and know your score, but want to increase your IQ score, is it possible? Yes, you can increase your IQ, but not by a huge amount. Your IQ is genetically traded, and it comes from your mother's side, not your father's side. You can increase it by about 5 to 20 points over your life. To do this, do brain training activities, such as reading and brain games. Just simply use Google to find examples of these sorts of games. Now, after reading about these geniuses, do not feel too upset about your own intellectual ability. In our society, if you have decent intelligence but a very high work rate, you can thrive. Combining intelligence and work rate will lead to ultimate success for anyone who is willing to do it. And if you don't have work rate, you can achieve it and you can get it. I will discuss this topic in a future video. Remember, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. But if talent does work hard, then good luck. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more future content.